All right, so pivot table. Um, so uh, if we go back, so the, the main thing with pivot tables, you want to have column headers. Usually it's good if you have more than 50 rows of data, but you could do it with as little data or as much data as you have, but just it gets more, pivot tables get more valuable once when you have more data, right? Um, in Google Sheets, it's under data and then pivot table. You're, it's going to ask you to choose where the data is, and then you're going to determine the rows, columns, and summary type you want in that table. So let's go over and we'll do it um, here. So with this data, um, last time I went through and I actually like manually calculated the average, you guys can see here, the average of the low CO2 emissions, right? is 0 0.94 and the way I did that was I typed equals average and then I like dragged down to all the way down and then I hit enter and I did that again for medium and I did that again for high and I did that again for standard deviation for each of the three categories. So you can certainly do data management and analysis in that way but it's time consuming, right? So the way we can set up a pivot table, I'm just going to create a new sheet. Um, I always rename my pivot sheets. I'll just say pivot table down at the bottom so I know what it is. And then I'm going to say data, go to data, and then pivot table. And it wants to know do I want it to go into a new sheet or an existing sheet? Well, I already. I already created the sheet that I wanted to go into, so I'm going to say existing sheet. But you guys can do this either way. And then it wants to know like where, so I'm just going to put it there and say OK. So it, it's saying, all right, we're going to put it in pivot table tab under cell A1 is going to be the beginning of the pivot table. And then going back up here, it wants to know where is the data, right? So we can actually go back to our this tab, the ANOVA tab. And if you click select data or range, it actually, it actually is like suggesting, it's guessing based on the data that I want A4 um, in the ANOVA tab, A4 through D195. That is actually this whole section. That is what I want. So they are correct, but you can also like copy it. And so maybe I'll just do it that way just so you guys can see. So I'm just copying, dragging down, and there it is, ANOVA tab A4 through D195. I click OK, and then now it's got everything it needs, where the data is from, where it's going to go, and it says create. And it's a little anticlimactic because like, there's just an empty table here. And you might be like, wait, what? I thought this was going to change my world. Um, so what you got to do now is tell it how you want to summarize things, okay? So again, they, they have some suggestions, right? But let's, let's actually just walk through this um, the way I would, I would probably do this. So rows, I'm going to choose the GDP category, the low, medium, and high. So let's see what happens when I do that. So there, it put in for rows those three categories, okay? And then for a column, I'm going to put in CO2 emissions in tons per person. And that gives me this crazy thing that is not what I want. So the nice thing is, guys, you can always make a mistake. <laughs> And you can just X this out over here, bottom right. I'm going to X that out. And instead of making a column with that, let's do values. Let's go to values. Whoops. And I'm going to say add CO2 emissions tons per person. So look at that. It's giving us the sum of the high, medium, and low the, the high income, low income, medium income countries and the CO2 emissions, the sum of the CO2 emissions. But we don't want the sum, right? Because 
we didn't have equal sized groups of countries. So instead we want the average and you can go here and where it says summarize by in the bottom, you can do um, choose any function you want and I'm going to choose average. And so now we have for the high income countries, the average CO2 emissions per year is 13 tons per person. And if we go back to here, to this main sheet where the data originated from, there's the same data, right? It matches, which makes us happy and makes us know we did it right. So it's 13.16, it's 5.67 for the medium. When I jump back over, 5.67 for the medium. Okay, so, and I, I actually don't like that this goes high, low, medium. You can tell it to sort by the average. Okay, now it's low, medium, high. So now, um, it's just an easier way to summarize data. So now say I want standard deviation instead, I can go in here, change average to standard deviation. And now I've got that data, boom, just like that. So this is critical if you're gonna be using a, doing a lot of data management um, to kind of just know this exists so you're not manually moving things around. And when you manually, manually do all these independent calculations, that's where you can make errors. So this kind of thing will really help with um, quality control too. All right, um, just put that there. And one thing is if, if you ever close this out and you're like, oh, where did my, where did my pivot table go? Um, you just click on the table, click anywhere on the table and it reappears. Um, and this could also be useful if you have like, if we had a year column or something, right? Then we could do by year, by low, medium, high and kind of see how things are changing. So a lot of different um, uses for pivot tables.